Today we're going to discuss how to solve and graph inequalities with one variable. The golden rule of inequalities is whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number you must flip the inequality symbol. So anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides, so like this is an inequality symbol here, if you multiply on both sides by a negative, you have to flip the symbol. So right now it says less than or equal to, you would have to flip it to say greater than or equal to. Now, open circles are created by less than, greater than, and does not equal signs. Closed circles are created by less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal signs. These are how you graph on the number line, and I'll show you that with these examples. There are five steps that you take to solve, to solve and graph an inequality. The first thing you need to do is to isolate the variable. And you want the variable to be on one side of the inequality. And by inequality, I mean the symbol, the actual inequality symbol. Then after you solve, and that's just like your normal solving, you need to check the order. And by checking the order, it needs to look like this. You need to have a variable on one side, the inequality symbol, and then on the other side, you should have just a number, a constant. Two examples of that would be x is greater than 2, or negative 3 is less than or equal to y. The variable's on one side, then you have the inequality symbol, and then you have a number by itself on the other. That's what you're going to solve and make yours look like. Then after you've solved for an equation that looks like this, you're going to circle that number, that constant, on the number line. So for instance, if I was doing x is greater than 2, and I had a number line that looked like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., negative 1, etc., I would go to 2, and I would circle that number on my number line. Then you determine If you have an open or closed circle, in this case, for this example up here, since it says strictly greater than, I'm going to leave it as an open circle. And then the last thing you're going to do is shade appropriately. And by that, they mean in the direction of the inequality. And when you shade, you need to make sure you're even shading in the arrow. So for the example up here, it says x is greater than 2. So all the values that are bigger than 2 are what I'm going to shade in. So I'm going to shade on this side, and then I'm going to shade in the arrow and make it really dark. And that's how you solve and graph an inequality. And we're going to show you with these examples on the page. So the first example is 5 minus 3x is less than or equal to 13 plus x. The first thing you need to do anytime you're solving an equation is get the variable on one side. I notice that I have a negative 3x over here and a positive x over here. So I'm going to move this negative 3x to the other side by adding plus 3x on both sides. When I add 3x, I get a 0 pair on the left, and I'm left with 5. So I have 5 is less than 13, and x plus 3x is a positive 4x. 
Then I want to move everything away from x. I'm going to start by subtracting 13 from both sides since it's being added to x. And I get negative 8 is less than or equal to 4x. Then I'll divide both sides by 4 to cancel the 4 that's being multiplied times x. And I get x is greater than or equal to a negative 2. Now I can rewrite this. I can rewrite this with the x on the left, the negative 2 on the right, and when I flip it around, I need to flip the sign as well so this says greater than or equal to. This is what I'm graphing. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to number my number line. I like to start at 0. It's just a habit, but you don't have to. You can start wherever you want. Make sure you show values on either side. I'm going to go to negative 2, which is right here. I'm going to circle that value. I see that I have greater than or equal to. That tells me I have a closed circle, so I'm going to fill it in. And then x is greater than or equal to negative 2 says I shade towards all the values that are greater than negative 2. And I'm going to shade those in, including the arrow. And that's all you have to do for that problem. Solve for what x is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, and then shade by graphing. Now, in the next problem, it's a distribution problem. I'm going to start by distributing negative 2 into the parentheses. So I get negative 6x minus 8 is greater than or equal to negative 8. Now I'm going to solve this just like I did this one over here. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. When I add 8 to both sides, I'm left with negative 6x is greater than or equal to negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Well, then when I divide both sides by negative 6, I'm dividing by a negative. So x is going to carry down over here because that cancels to 1. 0 divided by negative 6 is 0. But since I divided by a negative, this golden rule applies. And I have to flip the inequality to say less than or equal to. Then I'm going to fill in my number line. At 0, I'm going to circle that number. It's less than or equal to, so I'm going to shade it in. And it's all the values that are less than or equal to 0, so I'm going to shade to the left. Have you noticed when you write your inequality with x on the left, just like I did here and here, you shade in the direction that the inequality is pointing. So in this case, the inequality pointed to the left, so I shaded to the left. Over here, it pointed to the right, so I shaded to the right. So if you write x on the left, then you'll know exactly which direction to shade. The next problem is 5 times the quantity x minus 2 is greater than 2 minus x. I'm running out of room to solve these problems. As you can see, both of these came really close to the number line, so I'm going to skip the baby steps here. We're going to start by distributing, and we get 5x minus 10 is greater than 2 minus x. Then I need to move either the negative x or the 5x. I'm going to choose to move the negative x to this side by adding, and I get 6x minus 10 is greater than 2. Then I'm going to add 10 to both sides to cancel this 10, and I get 6x is greater than 12. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 6, and I get x is greater than 2. So I'm going to fill in my number line. At 2, I'm going to circle it. In this case, it's strictly greater than, so that tells me I should have an open circle, and I'm shading to the right. So I'm going to leave that circle open. The next problem, I'm going to start by distributing again. I get negative 4x minus 32 minus 2 is less than 20. Then after I do that, I'm going to combine like terms because I just happen to have two terms that ha don't have a variable on this side. And I get negative 4x minus 34 is less than 20. Then I'm going to add 34 to both sides. I get negative 4x is less than 54. Then I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 4. And I get x is greater than... 54 over 4. This can also be written as x is greater than 4, excuse me, negative 54 over 4. Apparently I can't do math today. Negative 13 and a half. So when I'm graphing, I'm going to count by halves. So I'm going to start here. And I know that I need 13 negative 13, negative 14, negative 15. I know that I need to have negative 14 and negative 13 because my value is actually at negative 13 and a half, which is this point right here because I counted by halves. 
This says negative 11, negative 11 and a half, negative 12, negative 12 and a half, negative 13, negative 13 and a half, negative 14. And in this case, I have a strictly open circle because it says greater than, and it doesn't have the equal to, and I'm shading to the right. Okay, last two problems. This problem over here on the left, the first thing I need to do is move the x to one side. I have negative x on this side and a positive 4x over here, so I'm going to move this negative x over here by adding and I get zero is greater than negative 10 plus 5x. Then I'm gonna move the 10 to the other side and I'm gonna move it by adding 10, so I get 10 is greater than 5x. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by five and I get two is greater than x. Then I'm gonna rewrite it so that x is on the left and I get x is less than two. So I'm gonna write my number line. I'm gonna circle two. It's an open circle because that's strictly less than and I'm shading to the left. Last problem is double distribution, and in this case I also have fractions. I'm not gonna clear the fractions because I noticed that four and two are multiples of two, and three and negative six are also multiples of three, so when I distribute my fractions, it should clear for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and distribute and I get 2x plus one is less than or equal to x minus two. Now I'm gonna solve just like I have been, I'm gonna solve for x. I'm gonna start by moving this x to the other side by subtracting, and I get x plus one is less than or equal to negative two. Then I'm gonna subtract one from each side, and I get x is less than or equal to negative three. So I'm gonna write my number line. I'm gonna to go to negative three and I'm gonna circle that point. In this case, it says less than or equal to, so I'm gonna fill it in. And then I'm shading to the left. It really doesn't matter how you number your number line as long as it has at least two points on the left of your number and on the right of your number. You can start it in the middle like I do, you can start it on the side, however you want. Just number the number line so that it fits your problem.